Lucy here. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through the brushes and textures included in the Dreamland brush box. And of course, the best way to learn is to create. So we'll be painting a portrait of a cute girl and we'll be using as many of the brushes as possible so that you can get a feel for their intended purpose. I'll be using a canvas that's 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels, but you can go smaller if you like. Although I do need to mention that these brushes have been designed to be used on high resolution canvases. I've included my sketch of the girl in the brush box so that we can dive straight into painting. You'll also find the color swatches I'll be using in the tutorial folder. Okay, so let's paint. So I've gone ahead and imported the sketch into Procreate. And as mentioned, I'll be using a 5000 pixel document. And the first thing I want to mention is once you've imported the brushes, you'll notice that I have grouped them into what their intended use is for. And I've also included just some instructions underneath or some tips and uh, suggestions on how to use them. And of course, as I said, these are suggestions. So please do feel free to experiment. You don't have to use them the way, um, you know, that I've indicated here. These are just starting points for you to dive in. So for this sketch, I used the pencil all rounder and it's a lovely um, sort of soft natural pencil. I often use my uh, rough sketch in my final artwork and this is a, a really nice um, pencil that kind of allows a really rough line work. So do experiment with that and you'll notice that it's actually quite a satisfying brush to sketch with. And as I mentioned, I like keeping this sketch layer in my final piece. I normally set this layer to multiply and then just play with the opacity, which you'll see later as we get on with the drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a burnt pencil and I'm gonna tackle her hair first. So on a new layer, bringing the sketch layer above that. And I'm gonna set that to multiply. And just bring the opacity down a dash and then on my new layer I'm going to be using that sort of brown burnt color so with a burn pencil it's set to um, color burn the um, sort of blend mode of that brush and you'll see why that's important so I recommend using this generally with midtones um, it's, it, it works fine with all colors except for the lighter colors because it is set to color burn. So you'll notice the lighter colors, um, I would rather recommend using the all rounder or Lisa's pencil for that. So I'm just simply going to start sketching and you'll notice kind of gives you that uh, burnt effect, which is I really like. And you would use this the same way you would use any pencil except when you push down, you get a really lovely grungy effect. And you'll see all those little kind of bitty edges, which is what we're going for. And I'm not going for perfection. I'm not sure if you know my work by now, but I like being quite loose. And the harder I push down, and the more I go over the same area, the more intense the, the color burn effect um, kind of shows up. And with this brush, it's almost like an inker in a way, but it's kind of like a marriage between an inker and um, a pencil, which is really nice. And I also like using it on its side, very much like a, like a sketch brush. And you'll see some lovely texture starts appearing when used on its side. So we're just working on the hair layer for now. And you can decide how rough you want um, to use, you know, to leave this line work. I really like those kind of grungy bits. And I'm just simply varying the pencil pressure as I work. And I just made that slightly smaller because I want some finer line work here. And 
and very lightly as I reach the edges I'm kind of dipping rough because I want little strands of hair flying on the edges there and making it slightly bigger I'm going to use the brush on its side as if I'm shading and you'll see my brush strokes are really loose So with this brush, I also like using it just very uh, gently on the edges of um, some of my, my pieces. And you'll see in the previews for this uh, product, you'll see I used it, for example, on the bear. I just used it to outline his uh, main body. And I kind of varied the pressure as I went with that. But this is another great way to really take advantage of the interesting texture of this pencil brush. So you'll see we started with um, kind of a sepia brown and because this, this brush is set to color burn, the, the color becomes quite a lot darker. So just bear that in mind and that's kind of part of the charm of this brush. I'm just doing little flyaway strands as I work. So she's wearing a little, kind of like a little ribbon in her hair. And the reason why I actually gave you um, my rough sketch and not this precise, perfectly clean outline of a drawing is because I want you to also interpret the line work and not, um, you know, not just trace over, over my lines. I want you to kind of, you know, feel your way around the illustration as well. your style could be a lot neater than mine so feel free to work slower okay so I think I'm pretty happy with the hair layer now so I think we're gonna now add uh, the background color and the reason why I want to tackle that now so that you can start seeing some contrast in some of the brush textures so creating a new layer for that oops I'm first going to fill this the underneath uh, color with a darker color first. So using kind of like a brownie gray color. So I'm just dragging and dropping that onto um, my canvas and then creating a new layer above that and choosing, it's almost a, a kind of going to the purple side um, of the spectrum. I'm going to start creating some texture for the background and just making sure I'm on the correct layer. So with this, um, with uh, you know, included in this collection are some layering brushes and these are really fantastic for instant um, texture without too much effort. So the best way to use these is to create um, a flat layer underneath these. Generally I like to use a darker color but I also recommend experimenting with the different tones because you can get really interesting results. Um, so for this now I'm going to use the intense grain and this brush is great for adding kind of like scratchy marks. So the more you push down with this brush the more you get those kind of textured scratchy lines. Oh, goodness. Should have worn my glove. 
and I'm just very quickly working my way around the illustration. Again, I'm not being, oh, I've left a whole area of hair. I need to come back to that. But let's just carry on here. I'm not being too particular with my strokes, but I am following the, the shape of her. And I like doing that because, again, that mimics real paint if you were painting onto canvas. So you'll see you're getting some really interesting texture. Um, because we used a different color underneath. So that's giving you some texture shining through. And what I want to do now is just use some of the stamps. Because I want to show you as much as I can in this video of all the brushes and textures. So coming down to our stamps, I'm going to start using some of the more solid ones. So I'm just using the bristle brush for now. And I'm just stamping here and there. And then I'm going to change that and use the dirty wash. And we're just building sort of flat areas, but with texture as we work. And then the grainy streaks, the nice thing about this is, is, is experimenting is like the best way to go. And if you've gone too far in areas and you want to create a little bit more grunge or at least pull that grunge back, that's uh, very easy to achieve. You're just going to use uh, one of the stamps as the eraser. So you're going to click on your eraser, come down to your stamps. And now you want to choose one of these sort of um, more translucent stamps. So I'm going to go with charcoal wash. And I'm just going to stamp once, and immediately we're getting sort of interesting effects happening. And again, experiment, experiment with the different effects and uh, brushes and stamps included. So I quite like what's happening there, and I'm going to leave it um, like that for now, and we can always come back and add more interest. But first, I need to finish the hair. <laughs> so coming back to that brown color. And my burnt pencil, I'm just going to finish up here. creating those little flyaway strands. I think that's getting there. Okay, so now we're going to tackle her skin using one of the filler brushes. So for the filler brushes, they are generally wet brushes. So you would use them the same way you would use a watercolor brush, for example, meaning there's going to be um, overlap if you overlap the colors, because uh, basically the brush is quite translucent. Um, but you can easily blend that with uh, one of the blend brushes that are included, the smudger, or you can use one of the texture brushes to kind of just erase those areas that if you don't like the overlap. I quite like the overlap in many cases, um, but there is a workaround if you don't. So for the skin, I'm going to use the Oscillate brush. And for this brush, you can blend as you work. So with light pressure, it gives you more ink. And the more you go over an area with pressure, you're going to start blending that um, kind of texture. So you can decide how much roughness you want or how much um, sort of you know, grain and texture you want in, in the area. And again, I'm, I'm making sure not to lift my pencil because for this particular area, I just want one solid color applied. 
So I'm just coming back here, just want to blend that a bit. And then for her ears, and her neck. So because we used a darker color underneath, you'll see there's some nice texture happening um, on her face without too much effort. So that looks quite interesting and it gives it, uh, you know, more of an interesting effect rather than just simple flat color. Now we're going to move on to her little um, bow in her hair. I think I'll work above her hair. Actually, no, I won't. Because um, I want I want that hair texture to be showing above the, the bow. So I'm going to work below that. And again, like we did with the background, I'm going to apply a flat color first. And then I'll apply some of the layering um, brushes on top of that. So using that pinky color, I'm going to use the wet paint. And the great thing about this brush is that every time you lift your pencil, the color kind of changes just slightly, which gives it a lovely painterly effect, which isn't too important um, because we will be using one of the layering brushes above that. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how to use this brush. So definitely with this one, it's about lifting your pencil each time to create those brush strokes. Whereas this one was using it, you know, kind of all at once um, without lifting your pencil. And I'll do a darker area on her shirt just so you can get a better idea of the color variations that happen. So on a new layer, we're gonna use one of the layering brushes and I'm gonna go with a lighter color. Uh, let's use the Stardust Grain for this one. So what I like to do is, so this is again, very much like a watercolor brush. You wanna to aim to not lift your pencil. And what I like to do is take it to the edge, but just leave a tiny little gap for that other color to come through. And we have instant sort of grainy texture, which looks really nice. So if you wanted to, I'll show you that area where we stopped and started again. It's really tiny, it doesn't really make, um, you know, have much impact. But if you wanted to, I would use an eraser. I would use one of the textures as an eraser. You could even use one of the um, layering brushes, um, maybe even one of the shaders. Let's do that. Just to soften that area, if you don't like that overlap. So as you lift your pencil pressure, the texture becomes a little sort of less um, obvious. So that would be a nice way to blend it as well. And we're going to be later applying some pencil work on top of this just to give us some definition. So let's work on her little shirt. For this one, I'm going to be using quite a dark color and I'm going to come back to that wet paint. So I'd like to show you that effect. So with this one, it's a little bit more obvious. You can see the, the color variation as I lift my pencil each time. So that can give you some really interesting results. Very painterly effect. So we'll be layering again above this shirt. So I'm not going to be too particular.
that you could really you know leave it like that using um, that brush but as I mentioned I want to actually show you as much as I can for the set so again I'm going to be using a layering brush so above that I'm going to use kind of like a, a similar to the background color it's just slightly different and let's use the streaky grain now you can really see the difference in um, well, you can really see the pronounced texture because there's quite a difference in the underneath color, and that's what we like. So, really, do experiment with that. As mentioned, I'm not lifting my pencil, but if I did, I would just use that eraser to get rid of the, the overlap. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to add her little collar. Again, new layer. And using almost white. This um, all round is great for quite an um, opaque solid color, which is what I want here. And a bit bigger. And now I just want to add some of her features. So I'm going to go back to her hair layer and I'm going to use that same sepia color and the burnt pencil. Maybe little eyebrows. Okay, so I'm going to move on now to um, adding some definition and using the enhancer brushes just so that I can show the intention of those. So on a new layer above, well, we're still underneath our sketch layer, but we're above everything else. I'll, I'm sticking to that brown color and I'm going to use the pencil all rounder, but I'm going to set that layer to color burn and start applying some definition lines. with the color burn layers taking on the properties of the color underneath it which I quite like that effect you can experiment and you know decide to maybe use multiply instead of color burn definitely your choice but you'll see here when we touched the cream, it went kind of yellow. When we touched the maroon color, it went darker maroon. So I like how it interacts. Maybe a little button or two. So you see those definition lines just add extra depth to the character. So on that same layer, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, the wet bleed pencil. What I like about this is it's really simply just to be used here and there, but you can also 
literally draw with it, which I have done in some of the pieces. And what this does is just creates like a lovely kind of bleed effect here and there. And you can decide how much intensity you want. They originally are intended for just enhancements, but of course you, yeah, you can use it any way you prefer. So it's just here and there I'm creating that kind of grungy interest. And all these little subtleties, they kind of add up to the overall piece. I often find that when I first start out, my piece looks kind of bland, but as I'm working and layering and adding texture, it starts really coming to life. So don't give up when you're not completely satisfied with your piece. Just keep going. And again, experiment with the blend modes because you may not like the color burn, I, I like that look. So yeah, it's definitely entirely all up to you. Just gonna give her some cheeks and using that same wet bleed pencil. Maybe a dash darker here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the enhanced brushes. Well, we've already seen what the wet bleed um, pencil can do, but the edge enhancer, I'm gonna show you how you can use that and how you can use it to, just to add some more interest. And the intention was to make the piece look like it's part of the background. So it's not just plonked on top. Um, so it's a way to blend your, your subject with the background. So using that edge enhancer, I'm going to use it on a new layer. And I'm going to stick to, um, you know, that cheek color. And I'm going to set this layer to color burn because I want it to kind of blend with the background, but I want, want it to be warmer, hence why I've chosen that color. So we're just simply going to very lightly, hope you can see that on camera, just here and there, adding almost like a faded texture. And this, there is no, uh, of course, there's no science to this. It's all about experimenting. And what I like to do is if I feel like I've gone too far in places, I like using one of the texture brushes just to erase. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're just going to choose our eraser and I'm going to choose the uh, streaky and cracked. And that's a great way to add yet more texture if you, you know, if you want that look. And you'll see it's starting to look kind of blended uh, with the background, not just kind of plonked on top. And then using the burn scratches, again, this is just an enhancer. I'm going to use a darker color. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Might be too much. So this is just an enhancer. And it's just here and there, very lightly. It's just adding that extra sort of you know, natural granginess to the piece. And if you're finding it's too, um, it's too harsh for you, for me that looks great because that's my taste, but if you're finding it too much, um, create a new layer and then set that to multiply so that you can control how much you wanna add. So let's do that. I'm just simply gonna do it over here. And then we'll experiment with the opacity. So you see here we, we've we created more grunge, which is quite nice. And this is set to multiply, which blends again with the background, whereas the other one is burning with the background. 
So definitely experiment with those uh, blend modes. And then we're going to use some of the shaders to add some uh, lighting to our piece. So coming right above everything. Um, I think I'm still going to stick to underneath um, our sketch. And yeah, so I'm, this is our um, pencil enhance layer. I'm going to work above that. We can always move things around if we have to. So using, it's almost like a purple, kind of unsaturated purple color. And the shaders are, are were designed for specific uses, but again, these are just suggestions. Of course, you must experiment. So the shadow shader was created for the shadow work. And then the highlight shader is created for the highlights. And I'm going to show you how to use that. So if we think about our light source coming in this direction, um, if she was sort of standing in the sun or a light, all these kind of areas will be hit by light here and there, which means this side is going to have a bit of shadow. So her hair is going to cast a bit of shadow. Her face will cast a bit of shadow over here. So that's just a loose um, interpretation of lighting. Don't get too pedantic about it. Um, I definitely don't want you to freak out about it. It's just to start introducing some lighting into your work if you're interested. So I'm going to set that to multiply. And generally speaking, lighting, especially shadows, are cooler. So that's why I've chosen a cooler color. And of course, you can experiment with the opacity. So I'm going to bring it down to 60 for now and see where we're at. And just for now, I'm just generally thinking how the shadow would work. And if it's too much, I'm going to use the eraser. I actually think we can go up in opacity. Let's do that. So her whole ear think about would be in shadow and this side of her would be casting a bit of shadow underneath her neck probably this little collar and I'm just varying the size of my pencil as I work to suit the area that I'm working on And she'll probably have a bit of shadow over here. So the shadow, you'll notice the shadow brush has some lovely texture built into it so that you don't have to fuss about adding texture afterwards. So the creases will definitely have lighting and it'll also have an overall so I'm just varying the pressure just so kind of using it lightly I'm sure this isn't like anatomically, well, um, should I say, um, scientifically correct, but it gives us an, an idea of, of some sort of lighting. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do is just want to take away some of it over there. So using the eraser and that soft eraser that I've included, just want to very lightly just take away some areas that are too harsh for me. But we've still kept the texture, um, you know, the nice texture of the brush. So I think I'm happy with the shadow work. Now let's add some highlights. So working above that, I'm going to set that to add. 
And add is quite a strong blend mode. So um, use it with caution, but the reason why I like using it because it's the most vibrant of all the, the light uh, blend modes. But I use it really low, so I'm going to start with 20, actually even maybe 15 opacity, and using a yellow. So that's going to mimic the sun. And then um, I want to use the highlight shader brush. And I'm going to try and figure out as I work, I think we can go up more, where the sun or that light source at least is going to catch. Clothing and objects. So you'll see it's got kind of sparkly bits in which I really like. And again, if we're finding it too much, we're still on that soft eraser, or you can use, um, you know, the brush that we're currently using as your eraser. But I quite like the soft eraser, just to take away some of the harsh bits that you don't like. And again, we we just feeling out where we think there could be shadow. And uh, highlights. Oops, too much. So I think this really adds um, just an extra sort of dimension and depth. Oops. I think she's starting to come together. I think what I want to do now is just show you how you can use the stamps to enhance a bit of the background even more. So what I want to do is creating a new layer. I'm going to stick to that color and I'm going to use one of the translucent stamps. So I'm going to use Ripped and setting to Add, you'll see that it is quite intense. I've just stamped one, so now I'm just going to play around with the size. And I want you to, um, you know, obviously experiment with <clears throat> using the stamp, but then obviously removing areas that you don't like. So I'm going to show you how to do that and just bring that down a dash. So you'll see the interesting effect it starts having, which I really like, but that I want to bring, I want to bring that uh, texture down a bit. So. Here we can really have fun with what we use as our eraser. We can use one of the textures coming down to any one of these. If you want to retain, well, let's use something a bit more obvious. And you can even use one of the papers as your eraser. And that's just another lovely way to Add another dimension to your piece. So that's like got a nice kind of gritty, grungy feel to it. I'm just going to bring that down a dash. And then of course you can do the same if you want to add more texture to um, your background layer using the eraser. Once again, I'm going to use the intense grain. 
Let me just zoom in. And you'll see we just by here and there taking that away, just adding another sort of level of uh, interest and grit, which we love. And then finally, um, I've included paper brushes that you can use on any size canvas. And the great thing about paper brush is that it's an opportunity to adjust the overall uh, color of your piece. Um, or you can just use it uh, as a multiply on multiply using um, kind of like a neutral color um, just to add that extra texture. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So on a new layer, I'm going to start um, by using just a neutral color and let's go with a ripped paper. So I've made the brushes quite large and the idea is to, you know, sort of one swoop just to cover your canvas. And set that, now this is where you can have fun, you can uh, experiment with blend modes. You can um, use multiply and then just play with the opacity or you can use color burn. So what that does is it just picks up here and there and burns into the colors as opposed to multiply which seems like an overall texture. And then I wanted to show you how you can influence the overall um, sort of tone of your piece. So I'm just going to bring that um, back up and I've set it to color burn. So if we come over to our adjustments and hue and saturation and we just play with the slider, you'll see how immediately it starts changing the overall uh, look to your piece. Like that's really cute because it's blending in that kind of pink tones everywhere. Let's go with the pinky tones. And then I just want to bring that down a bit so it's not so strong. Yeah. And there you have it. I hope that's given you a good overview of the brushes and their intention. And I can't wait to see what you create with the set. Thanks for watching and happy creating.